So I'm going to spend it right now. Okay, sounds good. Welcome back, and we have breaking news with Harley Schlanger. This is probably going to break the back of the whole dialectic that Mr. Vladimir Putin is the evil empire leader. Uh, the very fact that uh, the attempts made by the West to actually incorporate Georgia and Ukraine for several years now, and the actual statements that have been made over that over 20 years, up to $5 billion was spent to actually just put NGOs in place across all of these former CIS nations to encircle Russia, and inflame the situation there and start a new Cold War, which, of course, the military-industrial intelligence complex likes because their current enemy, which is al-Qaeda, is so nebulous, it's hard to actually gear up the military-industrial complex to make more weapons, get more surveillance, and start up a police state here in America where they have drones flying with FAA approval. So you've got a story here that's such a blockbuster. I'll to let you roll on this one. This completely blows away the credibility of the so-called new coalition government in Kiev. Uh, tell us it. Well, that's exactly the point. This was reported on Russia Today, but they spoke with the source for this report, the foreign minister of Estonia, a man named Payet, P-A-E-T, who confirmed the authenticity of this call, which was leaked. Now, what happened on this call is that the Estonian foreign minister told Catherine Ashton, and this is the quote, Catherine Ashton is the European Union Foreign Affairs Minister. Uh, Payet said, quote, there is now a stronger and stronger understanding that behind the snipers, it was not Yanukovych, but it was somebody from the new coalition. And then Ashton said, I think we do want to investigate. I mean, I didn't pick that up. That's interesting. Gosh. Yeah. Later she said, that's terrible. And then this Estonian foreign minister said, maybe that's why the new government doesn't want to investigate this. Yeah, and you now, had another addendum to that, too, too, that I found so shocking. And, it, uh, and also uplifting that there was a doctor involved that did the forensics. Tell us about that, too. Well, the doctor who spoke with the Estonian foreign minister, uh, whose name is Olga Bogomoletz, uh, said that she had been treating people who were shot and killed, both policemen and the people from the opposition, and that the bullets that were used were the same for each side, which means that the snipers, and everyone identified that there were snipers shooting, and, of course, the opposition said these were snipers working for the government. The government said, why would we shoot our own policemen? But this Dr. Bogomoletz said that it was the same bullet, same type of bullets used in all the killings. And wow. that this confirms for her that this was being done by the same group doing the shooting. Yeah. Now, the uh, she was then the subject of a bribe. She was offered the position of Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine for Humanitarian Affairs. The coup-appointed government uh, invited her to do that, and she turned it down uh, because she said that these killings were not done by the Ukrainian government or police, but by snipers. Wow. And the Estonian foreign minister responded to that by saying this already discredits the new government from the beginning. And then he said that all of the, this is again, the, the Estonian foreign minister, and remember Estonian government is not friendly with Russia, but he said that it's clear to him that the Ukrainian people do not trust the new Maidan leaders, that is the opposition leaders. Right. And he said all the opposition politicians stated, slated to join the new government have a, quote, dirty past, unquote. Wow. And he's referring, that's a, a polite way of saying they include members of, uh, who are Nazis. Now, since the last time we spoke, BBC did a story where one of their reporters went into the headquarters of the two leading opposition parties that are the extremists who were the gun-toting demonstrators who, after Yanukovych fled, partly because these guys were coming into the parliament with guns, uh, these are the ones who intimidated the parliament, caused them to vote the anti-Russian agreements and so on. In an interview with BBC, one of these uh, leaders said, well, we're not exactly Hitler, but we do want to clean the Ukraine. And they say, well, clean them of what? 
And he said, well, you know, non-Ukrainians. And then Whoa. later he said, Jews, <laughs> Hungarians, and Russians. Dang. And then they spoke with the leader of a group, which is part of the right project, the uh, uh, group that's headed by a guy named Yadosh, who's in the government. This is a group that's openly pro-Nazi. And in the interview with the leader from this group, he said, if the Russian people don't like it here, they should go back to Russia. We don't want them. And then later he said that it's the Jews who caused our problems. And his uh, 200-person interior guard troops, these are the ones who were camped out in the parliament, wear an insignia on their shoulder, which is the numbers 8-8, eight, eight, which is a code for the eighth letter of the alphabet, which is H, and it means Heil Hitler. Oh, no. This is the democracy-loving people that Whoa. John Kerry just went over to support in Kiev, that Obama is saying we are duty-bound to support. This is who, and, and who killed their own demonstrators to force the overthrow of the Yanukovych regime. Right, and that's, by the way, this is after they made an agreement on February 21st, and they shot them, and you could see them when they were running and shooting. It's like, this looks like a setup. And then you see Yanukovych kind of taking off out of there. He knew something was really wrong. He knew that until he got to Donetsk, which is in eastern or, uh, Ukraine, with the, the primarily Russian area, until he got to talk to the, to, uh, to, to Putin, because Putin could have gone in and stormed these barracks and just killed all these guys down in Crimea. He didn't want to. He wanted a bloodless. He wanted and asked an invitation from the local government to say, hey, we need to stabilize this situation. We don't want to break up Ukraine. We don't want people messing with our pipelines that run through Georgia or run through Ukraine. Uh, it's real simple. We're, we're busting into their sphere of influence through NATO, and there's no justification for NATO to exist. Uh, doing this kind of stuff to Russia. It just, it literally is trying to bring back, the neo Nazis are trying to bring back the Cold War. And if anybody doesn't get that, they're just stupid, aren't they? Well, and this is the, the absurdity of regime change. I mean, John Kerry made the statement, in the 21st century, you don't just invade another country on a made-up pretext. Oh, well, come what did on. we do in Iraq? <laughs> What were we yeah, threatening to do in but Syria? We, we, we got different rules, haven't we, right? We have different rules. We're America well, the great. We're the, America the it, glorious. <laughs> that the empire gets to do what it wants. Exactly. That's what Kerry is saying. Yeah, exactly. The and evil that's empire. where you see the horror of this. That the United yeah. States government is operating as an empire against American interests. Oh, of course. They don't care if it, it kills young people, blows off their arms and legs, puts us in danger of uh, bankrupting our country with another trillion dollar war, unnecessary medical or military equipment where they, they even cut the budgets uh, for doing laundry and not even give proper body armor to our troops or equipment. And yet they have these black hole projects that disappear into nothingness for, for you know, pork barreling for senators and congressmen. And at the same time, uh, they keep on printing money and exporting the debt around the world. And if the countries don't agree to use the American dollar for exchanging for buying oil, they simply invade them. I mean, it's really obscene, isn't it? Well, and this is the the brave new world of the Anglo-Dutch Empire with its <clears throat> puppet Barack Obama in the White House. Yeah, exactly. And, and it, once we expose it, though, and now, uh, you know, do you think Catherine Ashton is going to make a public statement or is this one that was intercepted by RT? Well, this is now out publicly, and Ashton is quite embarrassed by this, especially because the Estonian foreign ministry confirmed that the statement, the, the conversation did take place. Did they do a, an on-camera interview, or did they do an article that was published in the regular media? Because I know you're going to send that copy over to me of the text. I just sent it over to you. You should be getting it. Uh, I don't know yeah. how they are doing it, but, you know, it, it really does make the point, huh? Wow. That is so shocking. So shocking. I, I just, but it, it's expected, though. I mean, we, we, you know, we're not novices at this, but it's so shocking that they're this bold that they don't even they don't even care to lie or to even cover up how evil they are and how much they will say things that are blank right in your face. Well, we're just being good here, trying to help the Ukrainian people. Sure. That's 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 rich. And a 
some headlines or some other topics here. We have the articles we're going to show the links for. LaRouche Democrat Keisha Rogers in runoff for Democratic nomination for U.S. Senate in Texas. And I'm amazed. I mean, she is a amazing young lady that actually should be a senator. She's going to set a fire into the butts of both the Democrats and Republicans that don't have the guts or the backbone or the brains to do what they should do. And uh, she's already won. In fact, I think it's brought it to the point now in the Democratic Party, people are going to start realizing we need a bipartisan move to remove Obama. And it's not just Obama. He's like the center part of the tendrils of this giant tumor that is literally tied directly in, and it's an indirectly, too, also to the neo-Nazis in the Republican Party because they cover each other. Uh, they want well, to me, resurrect the, the, yeah, they want to resurrect the, the, the military industrial intelligence complex, and Obama is completely lockstep with globalism, and he's just a different dialectic arm of this monster that's also in the Republican Party. People need to realize that's why Boehner's doing nothing. That's why Boehner's meeting with Obama about Obamacare to fund it. That's why you don't see the Republican Party doing their own job or the Democrats, and especially the blue dog Democrats that have a little more humanity to them, are actually doing their job. It's ridiculous. And most of them don't realize that the Republicans have this election to lose because Obama is so incompetent. This thing with Putin is just another example of just how incompetent his entire government is. Not just himself, but the entire mess of them. Well, you know what, I'm just looking over the returns from the election, and, and since you've had Keisha on, some of your listeners are familiar with her. Uh, she was running as a Democrat who was openly demanding the impeachment of Barack Obama. Now, the Democratic Party had a, when a poll came out a few weeks ago showing that she was leading, they went nuts. They diverted their whole effort in the election to defeating her. Right. And the way they did it was not by going out challenging her to a debate. You know, if, if we're as crazy as they say, why not just smoke us out and debate us in public so people can see what lunatics we are? Right. They know that our ideas, including the impeachment of Obama, the development of uh, NAWAPA to deal with the drought in California and Texas, the commitment to Glass-Steagall to, to strangle the Wall Street banks, they know people support these things. So instead of discussing the issues, they come out and say she's not a Democrat, she's a cultist, she's this, she's that. Oh, all kinds they, of foolishness. So anyway, what happened, what I told Keisha is the more they attack us for impeaching Obama, the more votes we're going to get. And so all of a sudden the, they stopped the attacks and instead relied on spreading around money to get out the so-called identifiable Democrats. In other words, the ones who would listen to the party leaders as to who to vote for. In other words, they try to put the, it's like putting a smoke bomb in the building so you can't shoot at people. Uh, so you make sure that they don't stay, don't stay on target. So you create a state of confusion and disinformation around it. So they don't focus on the fact that if we don't solve these problems, we're in danger of war, economic devastation, drought, which is killing us in the Western United States, and the loss of our status as a world leader. I mean, all these things are happening because of Obama. And it's also, by the way, the fault of the Republicans, because before Obama, uh, the Republicans, and then before that, the Democrats with Bill Clinton have sequentially destroyed this nation. Well, the the, the Republicans are doing nothing, but just to finish this point on the, what they did, they suppressed the vote. Because instead oh, of going out, instead of using money to recruit new voters to the Democratic Party or to resurrect the old Texas Democratic Party of, of that supported Kennedy, that supported Roosevelt, that supported Lyndon Johnson. You know, Texas, the Democratic Party was the the powerful majority up until the mid 1980s when right. it got taken over by Wall Street and environmentalism and single issues like gay rights and abortion. And right. since then, it's been going downhill. Just as an example. When I ran for the U.S. Senate in 1990 in Texas, I got 250,000 votes in the Democratic primary. But I finished second with 25%, and the winner got uh, 75%. So a million people voted, and I got a quarter of the votes. This time, the guy who finished first 
didn't even get 250,000 votes, and only 500,000 people voted in the Democratic primary. So what so, you're saying is they, they'd, rather, they'd rather lose the election because they're not going to get the new voters back to the Democratic Party by putting exactly. forth policies that are pro-people, like get back to pro-life, pro-America, pro-Nawapa, pro-proper financial things like uh, Glass-Steagall, uh, disentangling from a military-industrial complex that's hell-bent on creating a new Cold War, all these crazy policies. Instead, they're basically saying to people, don't go with an outreach campaign, just call the people we know will be loyal to the Democratic Party. Now, in spite of that... Wow, that's, uh, a, that's, that's uh, suicidal, isn't thing. it? Well, here's the other thing. Uh, I, as I said in an article, that their strategy could be characterized in three words, suppress the vote. Oh, now, boy. here's the other thing they did. The leading candidate who the Democratic Party supported put three and a half million dollars of his own money into his race. Then that was supplemented by untold millions more from something called the Texas Future Party uh, Project, Turning Texas Blue and Battleground Texas. Three Obama fronts to launder money to various groups to, to either get out the vote or to stop the vote. Now, what's interesting is, in spite of that, they could not win 50% of the vote. The, the guy who came in first had 47%. Keisha had about 22%, but that, was, that put her in second out of five candidates and puts her in a runoff. So we now have 12 weeks until May 27th to win this campaign for Keisha. Now, given the collapse of the support for the Democratic Party in Obama, if we do our job over those 12 weeks, Keisha will win the Democratic nomination for Senate in Texas. Now, this is already being portrayed in the media by the really slimy scoundrels. What they say is that this just shows how stupid the voters are. But the more intelligent reports are coming out saying this shows how stupid the Democratic Party is, and they can't field candidates strong enough to beat a LaRouche candidate. So that's where we are in Texas. We have an opportunity in the next 12 weeks to deliver a message to every spineless coward in Washington that the voters in Texas wish to throw out Obama. And one final point on that, Dr. Bill. There were only 500,000 who voted in the Democratic primary for Senate in Texas, uh, of whom just less than half of them voted for the real pro-Obama candidate. There were 1.3 million who voted in the Republican Senate primary. And it gives you a sense of how the Democratic Party of Texas has collapsed. Yeah, and there's no need for that because we want healthy parties, we want healthy people. For example, uh, I'm not, I'm more issue-based and people-based than this idea of parties. I think part of the problem is we have parties that steer their policy and they have different groups within those parties that want to kind of form a policy platform. But most of the time they don't get a proper voice, whether it's uh, some of the positive things that come out of the Tea Party, a lot of them are very negative. So the positive things that come out of the Republican Party, they talk about pro-life, but they never accomplish it. Uh, and then we, we don't have them actually, nobody's actually doing something that's pro-America and pro-people and pro-citizens of Earth. It's Keish is one of the very rare politicians that actually has ideas and a way to accomplish them. Well, and Welcome back, and uh, Harley, let's uh, start on some of these articles that you've uh, got posted up here in LaRouche, and and you know, and and really, uh, let's. We, we, what I love about the fact the LaRouche Foundation, they take approach where, and I don't like all the labels. I mean, I've heard all kinds of criticism saying this and that. We live in an America where corporatism rules, where corruption rules, where the transnational military industrial corporations, we have true fascism, which is a fusion of state and corporate power. And it's not even American corporations, it's transnationals. And what we have is a situation where bankers give a rat's behind for what happens to the population of the planet, whether it's pollution, depleted uranium emissions, uh, restarting the Cold War, which is what they're trying to do with Russia. They're just saying, hey, Russia's coming back, man. We, these, these Muslims are just not, they're not up to the task of being a real Cold War enemy. We need China and Russia, and that really we can rev things up, and we can make America a complete police state where you need to not only show your papers, you need to be biometrically authorized or authenticated to even get in a building. I mean, that's where we're going in America. And people say, no, Dr. Deagle, you're exaggerating. I said, look, 
I took care of employees working at Lockheed Martin. And they'd walk into a little nondescript building in Littleton. They'd get a retinal scan. They'd get a digital fingerprints. I mean, they really have the, now the biochip from DNA biochips from Affymetrix and uh, Oak Ridge Lab, National Laboratories that can then analyze your blood with DNA endonucleases in five minutes and tell you who you are from any other individual on the planet. People don't realize this is where we're going and it's going to cost umpteen trillions of dollars between smart meters and, and drones and everything else. It really is a nightmare and people like Obama and people like these bankers are building it on our backs. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I, I think that what we have to realize is that Obama is impeachable. Yeah, he I is. Mean, the, the fact is that his latest stunt... Uh, by saying that the way we're going to deal with the situation in uh, Ukraine is by disinviting Russia to the G8 summit. Uh, that, that's not going to do anything, especially because the issue is not Russia. The issue is the U.S. support for a gang of Nazi thugs, just as it is our support for the terrorists in Syria. Now, Kerry went to Ukraine and offered a billion dollars of financial aid. Now that money is never going to get to the Ukrainians. That's going to go straight to the too big to fail banks of Europe. That's how this kind of aid works. And so uh, here we have a case of once again where the president is committing money for bailouts that's going to have the effect of worsening the situation for the people who live there. Yeah, exactly. And so I, I, I think what we've got to do is we've just got to recognize that we're dealing with a president who literally is insane and yeah, he really, is acting yeah. against American interests all over the globe. Exactly, yes. Now, in fact, uh, he has a personality disorder that's so malignant. I would say this is from observing over the last five years <clears throat> plus. He has what's called associative identity disorder. You actually don't know which Obama you're going to get depending on the day. So he, you have multiple personalities there. In fact, even as a reverse speech, you hear him talk about himself like he's another individual. That's because yeah. one of the reverse speech voices is actually talking about a different individual. The individual, Barack Obama, is a complete fabrication. This man isn't even an American. Barack Obama exists in his, in his mind as a fractured part of a did or dissociative identity disorder, multiple personalities. He literally is like, uh, you know, like this old movie about, uh, you know, <laughs> MPD. This man is a creation. He doesn't exist. That's why when Big Zbigniew Brzezinski picked him, that's why he went to training. There's evidence that he actually was a CIA operative. He even went through some cross-training in Russia with the GRU. Mos Moscow, we have to understand where Obama is. He is an amalgamation of whatever they want him to be. He can be a social organizer. He can be, look like he's a Marxist. He can look like he's a communist. He's a corporatist. He's, he's going to give everything like you know, Robin Hood to all the people. He's going to give them health care and an Obama phone. I mean, this guy is a chameleon, but he's whatever, as I say, a sock puppet for Satan. They want him to be so the globalist bankers can steal us blind, put us in a matrix, and then put our nation in danger of a thermonuclear annihilation caused by things going, oops, I mean, I, I, I like I, what you just said, a, a sock puppet for Satan. In this case, <laughs> Satan is the Queen of England, who basically exactly. I've the actually, for Obama. If you actually know the truth about uh, the Queen, the Saxburg uh, Gothas, these people are blood-drinking, human flesh-eating Satanists, okay? Uh, as much as it's shocking, and it may make you feel like you're going to vomit if you love the Queen and the Royals, they, they are vile, is the nicest thing you can say about them, vile. And you're dealing with an oligarchy which, under the name of the responsibility to protect, has launched a series of regime changes in which they claim to them for themselves the right to know who are good people and who are bad people, who should govern and who should be thrown out. And, you know, I'd like to know, I don't know if you've seen this in the last couple of days, but whoever wanted Samantha Power, whose loyalty is to the British, to be yeah. making U.S. policy at the United Nations. You know, people talk about the holdover neocons like uh, Victoria Newland and the Kagan brothers and people of that sort. But even worse, Obama has his own coven of witches in there, including Samantha Power and, and Susan Rice. Susan Rice is the one, of course, who lied on uh, Benghazi. Yeah, exactly. 
Now, uh, what happened is we have people like Susan Power. The other people are the same reasons. In fact, it's a continuous set of cover-ups and lies right back again by Gaza. It also shows the fact that Obama is always off balance. They don't have it war game out as to what Putin could have done. They should have known this two years ago when America was literally offering. And I still hear this idiot Kerry saying, yeah, we should have offered, and McCain, we should have offered to Ukraine and Georgia NATO memberships. Like, you pull your hair out and you say, you've got to be kidding. You're going to offer to a former CIS nation NATO membership so they can get involved and integrate with our weapon systems. And that you're still in the sphere of influence of Russia. And Russia says, if you do something that violates or puts our economy in danger or our population in danger for thermonuclear assault, we're going to swat you because they have to, because it's part of their own sphere of influence. And we get enraged when they actually go in and do something to protect their Black Sea port in Sebastopol. I'm just amazed that we have the nerve to actually say that. I mean, one, then we well, want to demonize Putin it's, it's and say Mr. Nerve. Putin is an evil it's, empire. It's not it's, nerve. It's that there's a uh, state-controlled press which uh, allows them to do it because it never reports to the population the reality of what's happening. And so the American people, as Helga Zeppler said recently, are sleepwalking into World War III. And that is the reality of the situation. Yeah, it is. It's, it's quite amazing. And what what I think is happening is the truth will set us free. And one thing I like about the LaRouche Foundation is you try to unearth all of this and continue putting it in a proper, full perspective. And not a negative one, but it's almost like a surgeon saying, yes, we have opened up the patient. There's an abscess in the pericolic gutter in the post, uh, Douglas Poach. We'll go in and irrigate these out, and we'll put in proper tubes. The patient will be on IV antibiotics, and they go in the ICU. The next day, you look at them, and they're fine, and they don't have a hot abdomen. You don't poke at it, and they're so sore that they jump off the bed. This is what LaRouche is telling you, saying we've got to have a proper diagnosis of why this happened historically and why the policies we're putting in place now and have been with not only Obama but Bill Clinton and George Bush, et cetera, right back to Reagan, why we have policies that are actually putting us in this danger putting in this danger of economic chaos, of a police state here in America, and losing our foreign policy, if you want to call it our, as John F. Kennedy said, our city upon a hill, a city that we're actually people the look high up to. Ground, we're, we're losing the high ground internationally where governments right. can't trust us to keep our promises. You know, the fact that Kerry said that in the 21st century we just don't invade countries oh my uh, gosh on a on a chumped up pretext well i'm sorry senator kerry but you voted to do that you protected the invasion of libya you supported the invasion of syria you've been supporting the ukrainian nazis uh so what is he talking about yeah i i don't know maybe he thinks he's actually trying out for the part of lurch on the Adams Family is a new extra of a new movie coming up. But, well, he looks uh, like he, He's uh, totally unbelievable. And you look at him, it's like, this man looks like he's coming off a bad bender. And he says things that are so out of touch with even what he's previously said, you don't know which carry you're going to get. Because I didn't know enough. Tons of freaking rules, lots of laws. As you say, like Vladimir Lenin said, show me the man and I'll show you the crime. I always find some way to hogtie people. <clears throat> Welcome back, and uh, Harley, let's continue on this uh, very important uh, dialogue because uh, I like the fact that uh, LaRouche has ideas and we can build on them. Uh, we can build on in terms of space, for example. I know part of the things we talked to the, the uh, space people about the idea, we need to terraform Mars. We need to build a magnetosphere and start terraforming. Yes, it may take 500 or 1,000 years, but believe me, in the blink of human civilization, that's nothing. We need to start uh, you know, having a proper transnational protection against near space objects. We've got Apophis coming here in 2029. That's not far away. If we don't have a major, we have a major Earth-based object that's coming, transiting across, that could strike the Caribbean this coming September, and I have this from inside sources in DHS. They know these things are coming, and their trajectory, unless it's altered, could cause major devastation. I know the U.S. Space Command's there, but we need more than that. We need Russia and China's cooperation. We need international creativity in every area, which is anti-aging, detoxification, and doing things like taking care of Fukushima. Where are the consortium of scientists to deal with this major environmental catastrophe? Obama's AWOL. I mean, he's not even, even discussing it. He's just grinning with that stupid 
grin and wants to kind of, if you love me, everything will be fine, kind of narcissistic, mentally ill status. It's very, very disturbing. Well, this is really, what we're looking at now is the, a situation where you cannot, uh, you cannot plan for the future. Because anyone who's competent in economics, and this is Lyndon LaRouche's expertise, right. anyone who's competent in economics knows that the, what you invest in the future is what will ultimately determine the health of your economy, including... Right the ability to control debt because you know the, there's a difference between debt and credit right you know, we're going into debt right now to pay debt some people might call that credit as in the name of a credit card but it's mr larouche's point of view that you always have to have as hamilton said a means to pay off the debt by producing more than you take in that's needed right. to consume and this is the secret of the American system. We've had a few presidents who really understood this, and mostly they've been slandered. Hamilton was murdered by a British agent named Aaron Burr. Lincoln, right. who understood this, was murdered. Uh, John Quincy Adams, who understood it, was essentially overthrown by the Rothschilds operating through Martin Van Buren, who imposed their puppet, Andrew Jackson, in the White House. Uh, William McKinley understood it, and he was killed, and they put in a British agent, Theodore Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt escaped assassination, but as he got sick, they got rid of a competent vice president and put in Truman so that when Roosevelt died, they could go back to where they wanted to go. So we're de And then Kennedy understood it, and they killed him. So we're dealing with a situation where most Americans don't know what credit is. They don't know how an economy functions. And that's a very serious problem. Yeah, exactly. In other words, you don't understand the idea. It's almost like trying to manage your physical, personal health or a small business. If Obama was a small business owner or the banksters, they would run it into the ground. And what you're saying is that the principles apply to whether it's your physical body or small business or a large nation like America, which is a business. You have to be able to grow the capacity beyond what you're taking out of it so that it actually doesn't die. And what Obama's doing is creating this artificial bubble with the bankers that are sucking credit out so the 1% don't even have to, quote, be manipulating the market or, or actually studying it. They just have to be in it. They get so much bailout money now at 0% interest that it just flows right through to their bottom line and their stock so they can just float around 90% of the new money that's been created in the last 10 years or so, uh, or actually since, since Bill Clinton, has come uh, to the 1%. So the total value of the money, literally 400 people own half of the wealth of the world. That's ridiculous. No, it's, it's completely ridiculous. Yeah, and, and people say, well, what's the problem? I said, the problem is we have a bankster system that is squeezing credit out so people don't have credit. This is what happened in 1929. The big banks decided they didn't like these small banks because they were actually creating new means of actually creating means of production, whether it's farms or small businesses and so on. And that's why they were in the roaring in the teens and twenties, even after the First World War, the economy boomed. And the big banker said, we don't like this. We're going to pull the credit on everybody. And they did. It was all by design. They pulled the pl plug on the credit, pulled in all these notes and destroyed all the small banks. So since 2008, we went from 20,000 banks down to less than 6,000. And the biggest banks have now increased in size 37% plus in total assets. The big bloated banks are too big to jail, are grown even more. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's really a, uh, well, it's a travesty. And, and you have a traitor a in the White House. You have a, a traitor who should be impeached in the White House. And you have Republicans who are playing partisan games around this. Yeah, I know. Uh, the Republicans are just the, I call the other part of the snake party. And we have to route them out, too. And, you know, there may be a few good ideas here and there, but by and large, it's peppered. It's almost like, you know, eating eating meat that's got cancer metastases in it. You know, the first bite may taste good because it doesn't have a cancer nodule in it, but the next bite is real hard and kind of gooey. It's because it's cancer. And yeah. we need to start, we need to get back to where we don't have cancer in our meat. Well, that's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, in other words, what we have is we have to have policies that are centered on people. They say they want to cut uh, food stamps. 
You're going to cut food stamps in the middle of a depression? This is not a recession. You need to make sure it pays for food, not a lotto cards or alcohol or can be used in stores in Mexico. You need to have, make sure that, that when you say you're going to make the premium education system, the first thing you do is get rid of the Department of Education and let standards be set so that you have a high bar and even you know, uh, we call charter schools and so on, can get access to monies so they can start really building an education system where the goal is to make smarter people that can not only regurgitate but actually learn how to use their brain, which they're not teaching in school. Well, it's, it's a very tragic situation overall. And what we're dealing with, more importantly than anything else, is a defective population because the population has allowed itself to be subservient to these elites. And I think part of it is that it's toxic education, toxic media, toxic water, toxic food, and people are being chemically and environmentally and educationally and media uh, lobotomized. I call it a lobotomized generation. You know, let's call it a Generation L for lobotomy. Uh, and it doesn't just it's not just the young people it's everybody the thing about the older people is that even if you've damaged them they have parts of their brain that are still kind of the old fixed memory before 1960 that remember John F Kennedy and can say I don't think that's America I don't think that's the way we act as America toward other nations right mm -hmm. no, that's right that's right and people don't know that people don't remember what it was like when our nation was really a, a source of optimism for the world Right. And in other words, everybody wanted to come here just because they wanted to even feel the state of optimism. And that drove them to be more creative when they came to our country. You know, that's why yeah. it says in the, 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 before you come to Ellis Island in New York, it says, bring us your, your poor and your huddled masses. Because those poor and huddled masses lift their heads up and say, I made it. I'm here. And we don't have that sense anymore. We don't have the sense that when people come from other nations, they want to become Americans. They want to make a little enclave of their little you know, geopolitical or religious or other group, and they want to make like America like a place where they can metastasize into the body politic of America and push their agenda. Just like the Muslims that come here and want to be, you know, extreme Muslims and have their 37 civil detention tra training camps so they can, quote, cause terror in America. Or, uh, you, you know, it's, it's bizarre. We've actually turned the nation upside down where everybody doesn't want to become an American. They just want to be here to suck off the teat of America before the, the, the major sow of America dies. And they're well, killing. It sounds I mean, to me like you're describing the oligarchy. <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're sucking. The, they're, they're basically saying when the sow dies, we're going to have pork, is what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty disgusting. And yeah. uh, Now, this, these other articles you have here... Um, uh, talk about LPAC intervened uh, on Obama on the eve of war. What did LPAC say specifically? We said, what's your plan for nuclear World War III when he was addressing the DNC and he denied that he had a plan an hour after he had already threatened Putin? No, no, what he does is he stumbles like a drunk man from one misstep to another. Yep. It's like they didn't war game anything out after two years after Georgia where they knew they went through the Rokai Tunnel and ticked off the Russians. The Russians sent a special Spitznaz forces, cleaned out thousands of Israeli, American, and British special forces and killed them all, dead as a doornail like Jacob Marley. And yet they couldn't have war game that when we did this in Ukraine, which we did, we planned it, that Putin wouldn't respond. Excuse me, that didn't take a lot of IQ points to figure that out. Thank you, Harley. You're an organization I've, again, the number to call is 800-922-2907, 800-922-2907 to get more info. Get into battle, support Keisha Rogers.